Hi everybody, this is a red and white Nahiri based control deck in standard. Many thanks again to Schlapp for coming up with this deck list over on Twitter. Really appreciate their view on deck building and things to do in standard. Really good insights over there. Go give them a follow if uh, Twitter's kind of your thing. At any rate, this deck works by exploiting our early game creatures, bringing them back over and over again, and then topping off with our Planeswalkers and Owl of the Dawn Sky. So down here, we've got Ambitious Farmhand to pull the planes out of our deck early, give us a little bit of ramp. We're not running too many lands, so this is kind of important. We need to hit four mana for the Wandering Emperor and Nahiri up there. Down in the second slot, we've got Cathar Commando, a nice flash creature which lets us sacrifice it to destroy an artifact or enchantment. This is a great utility card to have. We can flash it out and pressure Planeswalkers with damage, or we can keep bringing it back as kind of a disenchant on a body effect. Then next up, we've got Spirited Companion, a nice little two drop that draws us a card, and we can reuse it if there's not much else going on to get some more card advantage. One of the newcomers to this deck is the card Ossification from Phyrexia All Will Be One. Enchants a basic land we control, so kind of needs to be in more of a two to one color deck just for the odds of getting a basic land, and then we can exile a creature or a planeswalker, the usual white thing, until it leaves the battlefield. This is a pretty good rate for this card as a two drop. On our three drops, we've got Wedding Announcement and Fable of the Mirror Breaker, of course, two fantastic cards in standard, four Extraction Specialist to bring back some of our two drop creatures, and then we've got four copies of The Wandering Emperor and four copies of Nahiri. Now, Nahiri's got a really interesting first ability. We can effectively goad, for all you commander players, uh, a creature into attacking a player each combat if able. So what that means is that you can lay Nahiri down, and even if you don't have any blockers, if you hit the creature with the plus one ability, it has to attack you, the player, and can't actually attack Nahiri. So it's got some built-in protection that way. The next ability is also a plus one where we get to do a little looting. She's also got a third ability that it actually has no minus attached to it where we get to reuse our creatures from our graveyard kind of one more time and get a hasty copy of it. So overall, Nahiri's kind of a toolbox planeswalker that's really nice to have on the top end. So you'll notice that playing Nahiri for the full four mana cost, she comes into play with five loyalty counters. That's also handily enough a good way to bring back Owl of the Dawn Sky for one final attack for five damage after it's kind of done its business for us. We don't get the extra death trigger because it gets exiled, but it's a nice way to finish off some games with a big chunk of damage. Over here, we've got some regular dual lands. We got an Aganjo and we've got Roadside Reliquary because we're gonna have some artifacts and enchantments rolling around. And sometimes you just need to draw a little bit of something extra to finish a game off. So this deck was kind of fun. I enjoyed trying out the different abilities on Nahiri and finding all of the interactions between all these cards in this deck. So anyway, let's get over and see some of these games on the Ranked Standard Ladder. I'll be with you for some commentary, but as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. All right, looking good to start off with. We've got a Spirited Companion. We've got Fable. Follow that up with the Wanderer. Always interesting having to retool your strategies as the metagame gets faster and faster. Let's get the old doggo down. We draw into Ossification, which has been really nice in a number of decks I've tried it in. Thalia here, as usual, to slow the game down a bit. I think she probably deserves an ossification if we want to cast this Wanderer next turn. Looking like a soldier's deck. Alright, the old recruiter over there. Alright, we're at four now. No reason to sacrifice the doggo just yet. Sky Strike Officer. Nice for refilling the hand. Let's flash in this commando just to start working on our board presence a little bit. If we can get. Hold on a second. If we can get this wedding announcement going, that will be good, but it may just be worthwhile to put Ow the Dawn Sky out right now. Or flash in the wanderer. Yeah, let's 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 hang back. This is this really telegraphs that we've got the wanderer, but I kind of don't want him to draw any more cards. 
the attack gives him a free token. Let's flash out the Wanderer. We can at least exile one of their card draw engines, although that remaining recruiter is going to be difficult. We'll at least have them uh, make them pay mana for that ability rather than just tapping things that are sitting on the ground. All right. Leaning a little more on the flying aspect, I think. Great. Let's put a counter on the dog. I have got new moves to teach you. And I think Fable's the way to go. We'll spread out, start going a little wide with this and wedding announcement. Keep our creatures for now and really try to out token them as they play a Mirel, Myrel, Myrel. Oh, an ossification just in time. Let's keep these. Um, we're going to say that's Mirel as we ossification onto one of our basic lands and get rid of Mirel. Yeah, how do you pronounce that? I have yet to hear <laughs> anyone official pronounce that name. So let's get in with a uh, shaman. If they want to block, I am happy to make that trade. Great. I will trade a token for your card advantage engine. Let's get out of the dawn sky down. Now that we've gonna, uh, we're gonna have a wider board. The death trigger could make all of our stuff very sizable. as our opponent uses Brutal Cathar to dodge the death trigger on the dragon. Since it gets exiled, we don't get the bonus. All right, we pick up a farm hand. Fable will flip over, meaning we can start copying the dog as early as next turn, hopefully draw into an answer for the Cathar and get our dragon back. We'll thin the deck out a little, pull out a planes. And the Cathar will mean that we can flip this farmhand. Let's see. 3-3 three, three Lifelinker is what it flips into. It'll be a 4-4 four, four now that our wedding announcement has flipped. And they will go for the flipped Fable that we have. As another Thalia makes an appearance. First strike, kind of annoying. But at least all of our creatures are bigger now, thanks to uh, wedding festivities sticking around. Let's use our mana now and flip this over. I don't think we're going to catch anybody off guard with that trick. And we pick up another commando, which could be good to flash in later on if we're trying to angle for lethal here in a way they don't expect. So let's swing in. Math is for blockers. Let's make him have something. And our deck is structured to take advantage of pulling things back out of the graveyard, so might as well start making things happen, try to catch him off guard a little bit. But now I'm nervous about blocking, so we're going to do that. Siege veteran, very nice. Might stack up the uh, stack up the flyer. Maybe stack up the uh, brutal Cathar here. Nope, goes with the flyer. Can't really attack. Otherwise, we'll take take him down on the uh, swing back here. All right, another flashy surprise in the Wandering Emperor. Well, let's do it again. The only great blocker they have is Thalia right now, and. Maybe, maybe Harbin up there. All right, so looking to trade with the farmhand. Thalia's going to try to take care of the large Cathar. And that will get a... Oh, no. Oh, no. So often, I think of the Wanderer as removal only, that we missed the opportunity to grab lethal there. 
we could have put a plus one plus one counter on one of the unblocked creatures for the final damage. We will call it a punt. <laughs> Flyer gets bigger. We're still threatening lethal though if they attack with too much stuff, so they're just sitting back. Um, yeah, and I don't think I could have flashed in the Wanderer for an extra token there. Let's do a little draw. Still have enough for, for some Wanderer if we want it. Okay. Got to hold back for now. Can maybe try to exile one of these Cathars if they try to go in, although I doubt they will. Oh, and everybody's coming in. It's my turn to do some math. Well, when you have that much life, you don't need to do that much math. It worked out in our favor anyway, but that... Ugh, could have been bad. All right, good game, opponent. All right, we can't keep this. There's too much white in the deck. This could be okay. We can get rid of a specialist here. After an embarrassing game with this deck, hoping to redeem myself with all of the correct abilities on the Wanderer. The Wanderer has multiple abilities, not just one. We are going to get Farmhand going. A little bit of ramp in this deck pulls a few planes out for us. We can flip it into a bigger creature with lifelink later on, which could be good against what looks to be our mono-red opponent here. Our opponent ends the festivities, which is a new card I am assuming in response to mites and tiny creatures. Also hits us for one along with Kumano. We'll extract the farmhand and go looking for a plains. Nice little added value. All these little synergies in this deck that kind of make it make it all just fit so nicely together. So they play with fire on our life linker, which would have been a great blocker. But then that kind of frees up the uh, farmhand to do stuff later on if we wanted to. So opponent just going all out now. Rabbit battery, phoenix chick. As we drop down to 10. Ooh, another specialist. So it's a question of do we want to do two things or just hope for the life linker here? I think if we ossify, got to choose a land first. Let's get rid of the Swift Spear. It's got the most potential for extra damage. That does mean we can't surprise block the Phoenix Chick, but honestly, that's probably not the most dangerous thing that they've got for us right now. All right, they will Lightning Strike to the face. That means we should be able to, once they attack, flash in the Cathar Commando, and it will be big enough to successfully trade with the Swift Spear. We drop to three, so we're in Lightning Strike range. However, we have this Specialist. Three, two, three, two, excuse me, Life Linky Body. Only thing we can bring back is the Farm Hand, but the Farm Hand can also flip if we can get another creature on the board. The uh, Fable token will do it. All right, they're digging for some burn. What do they get? Two mountains. And they take us to one with the Phoenix Chick. All right, we need some life, and we need it now. All right, Farmhand can't attack. Oh, maybe it could have attacked if we flipped it. But at any rate, we're going up to four. Let's get Fable down. Planes. We can flash in this commando if they've got another hasty ground-based creature. Okay, they've got a foundry on board now, and they're still going in the air with the chick. That'll take us to two. Alright, we pick up Battlefield Forge just in time to get discarded to Fable here. 
and we pick up another fable. Okay, well, Cathar Commando will allow us to flip the farm hand. Great. Opponent taking a quick read there. Let's get in with that. Let's keep the Shaman back. They do have the Foundry that can take care of that. All right, we're up to five now. Not totally safe, but it's getting better. Reckless Impulse is going to show them a Foundry and a Chandra dressed to kill. I hope you like your what do they do here? They are going to exile. We should all fall all right, apart. that looked like a land, so they're going to play the foundry they've got. Still get in for two. And that's going to take us to three. All right, so now they've got two potential other attackers in the foundry. As our fable turns over. Hmm... Well, definitely sending in the lifelinker, and we're going to definitely go take care of Chandra there. No. Let's Why? ossify on this phoenix chick. And Fable. We can start filtering through any lands we draw, and opponent scoops it up. A little bit of life gain. Good game. All right. Decent looking opening hand. We've got Nahiri in here to take advantage of all the things we're going to put in our graveyard. And we've got an extraction specialist. Gave us a little bit of life link, life gain in that last game. Really pulled us through against Mono Red. Farmhand pulls out a planes for us. We are pretty much guaranteed at this point to be able to cast everything in our deck because I think we top out at four. Opponent with a thrumming bird. Haven't seen a lot of folks using that yet, but it's uh, got some good synergies. Let's see if we want to do this. That's a 1-1. One, one. Let's give this a try. So it'll come down at 3. We can exile most stuff out of our graveyard even at that level, but this will allow us to start looting. I'm looking for a little bit more to do. We're actually drawing a little too many lands for this deck at the moment. Okay, so opponent with a Kaido. I like the Thrumming Bird combo. I'm gonna put a free token on Kaido there. And another plus one, no doubt, to draw the card. Okay. No removal for that Thrumming Bird. I could see that being very dangerous if they've got other things that they're going to put tokens on. Let's loot away this Plains. We pick up Ossification. Let's get rid of the Bird. I feel like we're going to have enough creatures that we can start attacking Kaido. So let's get in for one here and we'll save this Commando to flash in and get some extra damage going on their blue-black planeswalker. Evangel of Synthesis comes in. Opponent gonna do some looting of their own. And another Thrumming Bird. Thrumming Bird might not be a bad inclusion if this is something like a Demir Planeswalker's deck. Perhaps it includes the Ikramoon Gauntlet. We'll flash in the Commando, but they've got some blockers now, so we're going to have to see if we can get a little creative here. Let's loot again with Nahiri. Stand up and fight. Ossification. Well, we will put that on a basic land. Yeah, I think we just get rid of Kaido. There's no... I don't think there's any good way I could have attacked. Oh, an opponent just scoops it up. Too much value, I guess. Good game. 
All right, we've got some, uh, all of our colors. We've got plenty of lands to play things. Let's go. Oh, let's go get a farm hand. Guarantees us double white for the Wanderer. Opponent on some green. We'll see if we see a Rot Priest come down. Oh, maybe eventually. Definitely leaning on the toxic stuff. All right, companion draws us into ossification. No attacks from our tiny creatures. There's the rock priest. All right, really leaning into the toxicity here. No, well, I think we just need to take that. We're at four mana. We could wander or we could double ossification. And I think double ossification is the least dangerous path for us. We'll take care of Rot Priest while they're tapped out and can't protect it. And we'll take care of one of the remaining two twos. That can give us two poison counters a piece. And if we want, we can throw these creatures away and block the remaining toxic creature that they've got. Let's see if they've got any combat tricks for us. They do not. Following up with a Johnny. That's a nice include in here. Goes looking at the top, but doesn't find anything, unfortunately. So let's get Jetmere's Garden down. We've got Farmhand and Doggo in the Grave for Extraction Specialist. Or we could try and do a surprise move with the Wanderer. I think it's just better to get something down on the board. Draw into some more stuff. Ah, yes. A big flyer. That might be good for pressuring this planeswalker if we can't get through on the ground. They pick up another Ajani. We'll see if they have any creatures hiding out in that hand. And Dollhouse. All right. I like your moxie, opponent. That's nice. All right. Let's, uh, let's get in and Ajani here. And I think our dragon is the way to go. Opponent reveals what wedding nice. announcement. We just need to keep a Johnny away from that emblem. With that second to Johnny. It may even interact with Dollhouse now that I think of it. Giving us poison counters as uh, creatures come into play. All right, the Vigilant Dragon can definitely get in, and we can get in with the Specialist. All right, first copy of Ajani is down. We gain a little bit of life, which is not entirely relevant. Although I have noticed that a lot of these uh, decks with toxic creatures, the creatures are big enough or, you know, have double strike that they actually end up doing a solid chunk of damage to your life total anyway, so it's kind of attacking on two fronts. Opponent reveals yet more cards from the top of the library. But not finding very much. Let's flash in the Wanderer as a nice surprise. We'll make a token. In case our dragon dies, it'd be nice to have something to put some more plus one, plus one counters on. Not sure we need to go digging for permanence with the other ability. All right, let's put a counter on the specialist. Remember your training. We will take the dragon over a Johnny's way and take these two to the opponent's face. A Johnny down, opponent to 11. Let's play this dog out. Draw a little bit. Keep up the ability to flash in another Wanderer if we need to. All right. Too much. Good game. Well, that's a lot of two drops if I've ever seen them. We can get Jetmere's Garden down turn one and then follow up with uh, either a dog or an ossification, depending on what they lead with. Been facing a lot of people trying out various Rot Priest decks on the ladder. 
this could be one of them. That is the right combination of colors. Opponent showing that they're holding on to some kind of instant. Let's our dog resolve and draws us a card. No play though. I wonder if this is uh, close to, I think Sonio had a control list in these colors with Nissa. I think Jace was in there. Usually if this is like a Ivy Rot Priest combo deck, they've played one of them by now. Oh, okay, there's Ivy. No blue left, but there's enough stuff in green that they could protect it. I think we can trade in this commando and that one. They're not going to see a lot of action. Let's do ossification. That's right, pick a land first. Okay. Well, that was kind of expected, so... Luckily, Ivy is still their only creature on the board. Let's pull a planes out. Ever so slightly improving our draw. No reason to attack here, as Ivy is indestructible. Ooh, combat research. Excellent, excellent card that's going to help keep their hand full with even more cheap interaction for us. No second creature, though, so they're not getting the full bonus out of Ivy. Let's get a planes down after our fable flips over here. And let's try to ossify right now. I think there are some reactive cards that untap our opponent's creatures, and I want to know. And I want to know what they've got to block with before I send our kind of <laughs> weak little board of creatures in here. All right, that gives us a token. I think what we want to be doing here. Let's see, is that... Let's see, we can do that for four. Or we can keep our treasure around. Let's keep our treasure. We could do a turn where we do Fable and Wedding Announcement in the same turn. And let's get back Commando. So what we might be able to do here is distract our opponent with Nahiri. And this will allow us to hopefully take care of combat research with this commando. They're down to two cards and they're not really putting a ton of poison counters on us. So if we can just kind of work around Ivy, that could be a path to victory. Rot Priest finally here. Let's see what their last card is. Oh. All right, Rot Priest going to activate twice. That's an interesting combo. That uh, that draws them a card. Oh, all right, going to do it again. Two more counters for us. Draws a card. Gives us a counter. Draws another card. Actually, that's a really <laughs> that's a really nice inclusion in that deck. All right, well, they're out of blue. Can't do it another time. All right, so let's... And we've goaded the Rot Priest. We can copy the dog for a little card draw. We pick up Wanderer. We'll send in the Shaman. 
Let's see if they want to block that. They do not. All right. I think what we do here is keep up the Wanderer and try to get rid of one of these. Although now with four cards, we will see if that happens. All right. Combat research. Two more tokens. We are at six poison counters, meaning they only need two more spells. This will take us to eight as they enchant the Rot Priest and Ivy again. Opponent had two cards left. Wanderer has to hit here since the bypass makes the Rot Priest unblockable. That would take us too high. Okay, good. That works. Unfortunately, opponent drawing even more cards thanks to the enchantments that Ivy has copied. All right, opponent must have drawn too many lands here. All right, we could potentially a Ganjo Ivy uh, as she comes over next turn. Uh, I think we need to start making our creatures a little bit bigger here, putting the pressure on our opponent. And we'll copy the bigger one that we've got. An extra two damage. Just in case they can untap Ivy with like a shore up or something. I don't want to lose the fable to that. Alright, opponent at eight. We just need to survive one more turn. Let's get rid of the specialist, see what we get here. Just a garden. Counting the mana real quick. If we wander, we've got three left. So let's do that. Try to get Ivy now, but since they're tapped out of blue. Yep, we can pay the ward cost. And it works! Alright, that removes some combo potential, but they could... Alright! Man, we got there. Good game. This looks like a decent opener. We've got all of our colors. Roadside Reliquary to fill up the hand. Farmhand to get some more planes going here. No argument for me. Ooh, Basilica Spellbomb? Is that right? Let's pick out a planes and see what else the opponent's got for us here. Yeah. Ah, I see. So they can use the spell bomb to uh, make their double striker bigger. That's pretty nice. I do like seeing what people come up with. And I feel like you still get a little of that in the like lower platinum range where I am right now. Gold is pretty much just like one of the greatest, greatest outlets for creativity I've seen. <laughs> You get some you get some good opponents. Uh let's see. Too many dogs. Too many dogs on the dance floor. Let's get rid of those. Adeline having vigilance is not great for our suite of removal that we've got in hand. So Wanderer may just have to be used on the double striker. They will draw and pump up the double striker. It gets flying. Don't think there's any creative way we could do this with the Wanderer unless we want to sacrifice all of our creatures. Or we could make could have made a token. Let's see. Well, hold on. Yeah, I think I think we can still do this. This is fine. We will double up on Adeline here and take a bit of damage from the flyer. I don't know, maybe it would have been better to do the samurai token there, but 
I think the result is pretty similar, and we didn't have to minus the Wanderer there. So now we can do it on our turn when our opponent's still tapped out. I am almost sad to see you go. And let's follow up with a beefy dragon. Unfortunately, can't copy it because it's legendary. Fable doesn't let us copy legendary things. Are they going to exile our dragon? No, fateful absence, so we will get the trigger. So we can either go looking for permanence or put counters on our stuff. Let's put some counters on our stuff. Hmm. 3 1 with some oil counters. Well, our stuff is now bigger. Thanks to that dragon, so let's get in. Alright, opponent decides to trade. I'm okay with that. We're not copying anything too huge with the Fable, and it's already given us so much value. Let's get a full price Nahiri going. Let me just double check what that does one more time. Creature or equipment. Goad something or do a little looting. Let's loot. The land. That will allow us to... Well, let's get this farmhand down instead. search for a plains. We could possibly flip that. And we've got enough left over for the dog anyway. All it takes is one token from the wanderer here and we'll be able to flip over the farmhand next turn. Opponent with a Mirel. And they've got a Mirex on board as well for making mites. Nahiri, what can you do for me? All right, let's do this. We do have both an artifact and an enchantment, thanks to the dog. And we pick up a fable. Let's see, if we put a counter on the farm hand, We've got the edge we business. can flip it, and it will be a 4-4. But I kind of want to protect our planeswalkers. Let's just get in with that shaman. All right, and we will goad Muriel into attacking us. Okay. Oh, and now we get ossification. Okay, well. <laughs> Argument for drawing first there, but it works out. I was going to say, even if Muriel gets to attack, we're only... Um, they're not going to create that many soldier tokens. All right, Destroy Evil hits the Pumped Up Shaman. Basilica Spell Bomb. Wonder if they'll just sack me up right for the card draw. Because this is a wide board. Another reliquary, that's going to be nice. Let's get a uh, hasty copy of the dragon. And that should wrap it up. Good game. 